So hello and welcome to Beauty as Sparks TV. Uh, we are honored today to have with us Yogesh Mudras. He is the managing di uh, director of Informa Markets in India, and uh, Yogesh brings uh, leads and manages the entire India operations of Informa Markets, which is owned by Informa PLC, a leading B two B information services group and the largest B two B event organizer in the world. Within just 10 years of its inception, Informa Markets in India finds itself firmly positioned as nation's leading exhibition organizer, dedicated to help specialist markets and customer communities domestically and around the world to trade, innovate, and grow through exhibitions, digital content and services, and conferences and seminars. At Informa Markets, Yogesh's repertoire of business is extensive and includes large format B2B exhibitions in the virtual and physical formats, conferences, seminars, business intelligence, and other properties that serve multiple key markets, such as pharmaceuticals, jewelry, security, and homeland security, occupational safety, baby and maternity, renewable and nuclear energy, food ingredients, packaging, beauty, and cosmetics. Last but not the least, beauty and cosmetics, <laughs> Yugesh. So welcome, Yugesh Mudras, uh, to Beauty as Space uh, TV. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Um, so Yugesh, um, I would uh, congratulate you on uh, uh, the successful, uh, you know, the, the preview of Cosmoprof and then the first uh, event that we saw last year. And uh, we definitely, uh, we, we were expecting the, you know, uh, uh, Cosmoprof to bring that difference to the market, you know, because mm -hmm. we already have a clutter of events happening here. And, uh, but we would like to first understand from you, the, how we understand that COVID has completely disturbed uh, the, I mean, every industry, but especially the events, uh, uh, you know, the arena where people would meet and greet every year, look forward to going to the exhibitions and conferences, and uh, everything is in a shutdown mode for the uh, last so many months. So I would, my first question is, as you know, you might have expected it, how has COVID impacted your business in India and what have been the learnings? Yeah. So, so I think uh, very rightly said, I think COVID has impacted the business in India. That's, that's what your question is. I think it's impacted business, not just my industry, but every industry, I must say. I think it's, it's more or less, some have been impacted much more than less others. But I think for us, even more, because we, we come into the face-to-face -face domain and our, our entire industry of exhibitions is all about uh, meeting face to face and having it's it's probably in this kind of world scenario seen as an anti-social distancing because but but if we say we we form we are organized gatherings uh, uh, so we are seeing that opening up be it in Germany be it in China be it in Korea be it in Japan in fact as we speak right now our own South China beauty show is currently happening now in Shenzhen it opened uh, a couple of days back it's right now happening in Shenzhen and it's a launch edition we have launched a show in this kind of COVID scenario so it's not that uh, B2B exhibitions are going to be going anywhere it's, it's only this scenario where, where we are impacted of course uh, we have to learn a lot of things how to transform ourselves into a different world altogether because it's a new world uh, post covid is going to be a different scenario with a lot of social distancing health and hygiene norms and safety protocols to be observed and and we are up to it and uh, uh, definitely so in the near term we are, we are seeing there would be some impact on the exhibitions but what we have tried to do in this phase is also modify ourselves as a business so we we know uh, as, as as we are meeting virtually and so in fact we also as a business have transformed ourselves and tried to move virtual and uh, we are doing a lot of virtual trade shows uh, across various domains and that, that's a way of creating business opportunities for our partners, exhibitors and various stakeholders. So I think we, we are trying to transform ourselves in this business. But I think our industry, if we are talking of beauty and cosmetics, I think this is one industry which, which has really uh, transformed. This is one industry which is using a lot of uh, technology induced changes which we can see. Yes. Uh, brought about by newer generations and time. I think I think very happy to see customizations happening in our industry, uh, artificial intelligence and personalization technologies being used, which is which probably has brought our industry ahead as, uh, as beauty and cosmetics in last five years. If I'm, I'm talking of both the industries now because exhibitions though is my main industry, of course, we have as beauty and costume of one of our leading shows. I, I, I also uh, count myself as a part of this very robust beauty and cosmetic industry. 
so i think i think maybe we are changing and i think we we are going to see lot of changes in the times to come yes definitely and hybrid is the way to go for all industries i think absolutely so worldwide cosmetic industry has felt an unprecedented impact and it for the beauty industry it's like the lipstick effect is also not working this time you know we used to say even if the economies are at the lowest the women will go out and you know purchase that one lipstick just you know to feel good but this time <clears throat> even that has been impacted so what's your assessment of the impact and how do you see it affecting the uh, especially the cosmetic business in india yeah so i think uh, very very important thing that we talk about lipstick effect every time for our industry here yeah. uh, of course well, i think what we should also think of is revenge buying i yeah. think we we were seeing a, a entire lockdown but i think this sector is rather very resilient and uh, uh, by the trends that we are seeing of course the industry has been impacted uh, the global beauty industry's revenues are expected to fall by around 20 to 30% in this year 2020 and if this covid 19 epidemic also runs for next 3 to 6 months i think it could be as large as 35% is an estimate on the impact, global beauty industry yeah. uh, us approximately has about 30% of the beauty mark industry which was shut down and i think that that we 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 all keep on looking at the western hemisphere what's happening but we are we are seeing recoveries we are seeing return to work that is happening many will definitely continue to wear face masks and what would happen is there will be different treatments which will uh, come in to our industry like i i'm I, what i'm hearing is uh this about the mass treatments which which are now getting more popular i think that was reported right. by uh, alibaba reported i cosmetic sales increasing by 150% month over month so i think so beauty will transform in a different way in in this uh, epidemic period i must say uh, of course by contrast skin care hair care and bath and uh, body products uh, are also seeing to be benefiting from self care and pampering trends that we are seeing sure. now that's happening also the do it yourself products the beauty care products uh, are going to keep on increasing i think many beauty salons have i know have closed down in some other places where they don't have enough consumers or uh, because of also the risk of physical contact and all but do it yourself uh, hair coloring nail care i think i think there are a lot of beauty categories which will find new customers that that's that's what i i believe i think i think which will be a new trend for the industry in the in the near future of course uh, we we see this once once the vaccine comes out i think i think the things will improve and we with the we see the normalcy returning back but we don't know at the uh, at at present what would it be whether it will be uh, the first quarter of 2021 or it would be the second half of 2020 so there's no no that end date in sight as of now sure sure uh, that's amazing i mean i'm i'm quite uh, amazed by your knowledge and 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 you must be having the same knowledge in all the industries that you work with so okay so um now let's talk about the virtual expo that uh, cosmoprof has just announced for india uh, how does it add to your offering so yeah i think it's it's the best way to uh, speak to your customers now because customers really are looking at Uh, because of this three or four months of lockdown i think there is enough of uh, business opportunities which are lost or not created and uh, people want to return back to normalcy and uh, what better way than sitting in the comforts of your home uh, or your offices without coming to a physical show so this virtual expo which we are coming up which is on august of 5th which is for the cosmo of india and we are also launching the personal care in the ingredients and lab expo virtual expo right. it is actually going to be this uh, presenting this flexible and safe opportunity for the beauty and for, uh, personal care companies and professionals who are wishing to reinforce their business relationship with partners right. and have greater visibility amongst people and then it's, it's it's going to be very important because this will also not only be just an expo but we also have a very pop up conference one day conference which is happening and there are two parallel tracks which are happening alongside one is for the finished products and one is for the in, uh, ingredients products and uh, we will be talking of we are national as well as international speakers coming and talking talking about indian latest trends and the commercial trade and business potentials across the group so 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 lots happening right now uh, right. also there will be distinctive address on personal care formulation challenges trends innovations for the beauty sector so we are also in addition to that in september we are also uh, as cosmo of india presenting the cosmo talk uh, cosmo talks virtual series uh, which is a series of five webinars which will be held by key international experts 
Sure. So this, this is what we are trying to keep engaged with our community because we feel that we are a part of this community and we should do our bit in this kind of scenario. We, we keep that engagement levels up for the industry and we can create those kind of platforms. So we will keep on innovating as, as we say. And of course, this is not the end of it because this is the launch for the virtual show, which is a one day show. We'll definitely look at expanding that and continuing in the near future because what we will see by this virtual show is also participation of a lot of international players in terms of buyers as well as coming in because at times they may not be able to travel to a physical show but they will definitely want to be a part of this we already have uh, over 150 uh, international buyers who have registered to come for the show so I think that that's a very interesting trend that we have seen with uh, one as soon as we launched it we just opened a registration about three weeks back and within three weeks we have got this we still have three more days to go we, we are hoping to cross 200 to 250 international buyers uh, looking at this event coming in for the show so uh, it it opens an entire new horizon for us uh, to track and create business opportunities for a lot of companies and also knowledge sharing in this kind of uh, scenario. So we will look at continuing this even when we do physical shows by uh, uh, clubbing it with a physical show and uh, doing it in hybrid mode. Fantastic. So um, now looking at the conference, how are you uh, looking at standing out? You know, uh, there is a session by salon owners uh, who deem a salon audience, you know, like for every kind of conference that you have, you need to attract the right audience as well. Um, does it entail that Cosmoprof is growing its professional salon offering as well when it comes to the exhibition? Are you bringing more exhibitors from this category? Or, uh, you know, worldwide, when we go to Cosmoprof, we listen to, you know, mind-blowing sessions of, you know, with where we, with what we've not really known or heard. And, you know, we come back with so much um, material. So how is it that in India you plan to stand out? Because as far as salons are concerned, uh, you know, you get the, uh, this uh, business is really cluttered. People are doing like mom and pop stores inside exhibitions. Sales are happening, which was a fresh, refreshing change for Cosmoprof last year that we saw that they, you know, we didn't say the, see the, you know, the bazaar happening there. Um, so how, uh, as far as conferences are concerned, how are you going to stand up? So firstly, I think, uh, as you know, you have visited Cosmoprof, you were telling me uh, internationally and you see, I think, I think we, we come with that kind of brand lineage and we have to stand by it. And uh, that's the reason uh, we, we are trying to create something uniqueness to this Indian market. And of course, I think one of the biggest feedback that we have got is to have salon on, owners involved. And I think that is what we will aim to do at every Cosmoprof, be it a physical event or the virtual. So, so there are uh, this conference, there are agendas where we are talking on uh, benefits for salon owners, what they need to be looking into. We are the, the, the topmost salon owners coming in and talking on the panel discussion. So there is a focus on salon owners. Of course, there will be exhibitors, exhibits also, which will be offering to the salon owners over there, which will be, they will be able to see the latest products and innovations in this market. So it's, it's, it's an entire value chain we are catering over here. But of course, uh, we will keep on uh, creating various solutions. And this is, uh, bear in mind, this is just a one day session for now. We right. will come with larger salon owner focused initiatives as we move ahead with our physical right. shows in the future. But definitely, we have sessions who are dedicated for salon owners, which they can definitely uh, use to value it for their own uh, uh, benefit. In fact, talking of latest innovations, industrial solutions, and challenges and tools, which all professionals must deal with to stay in this. Definitely the stuff market, which we are seeing right now. Sure. And what about the other categories? Are you, uh, uh, how, I, I know that, you know, you have the personal care ingredients category uh, that's yeah. been catered to. Yeah. Um, India is also known for, you know, the, uh, the Ayurveda and all that knowledge that comes with uh, traditional, uh, you know, sciences. So is that an area that you would like to focus on? Yes, absolutely. So in fact, in fact, if you see, uh, our, we have two parallel tracks of sessions, full day sessions, which are going on. So after the inauguration from 11 o'clock onwards to in the evening, we have two parallel tracks. The entire one session is focused on, uh, on finished one and while the other one is on the ingredients. In the ingredients, we are focusing, if I, if I look at the ingredients agenda in particular, there are, uh, they are talking of sessions on really, we have talking of clean beauty, the green chemistry of the clean beauty, we, are, we have product formulations for active ingredients. Uh, we also have, uh, in fact, a session where we have uh, uh, somebody from the Ayush ministry coming and speaking. Yes. 
so we are looking at the the ayush element also for our or our uh, industry as we speak uh, in in addition to that i think we we, we are also uh, talking of uh, product formulations i think the functional aesthetics elements and personalized beauty basically that, that that's that's one trend which we are seeing uh, which is coming up we, we also have a, an aesthetics beauty show in uh, which runs in us so we are trying to see how that synergizes with our show here so we we can add those elements to our show as well as a conference so so those elements are also being tracked and uh, we are trying to see how we can make the agenda more contemporary and more relevant for the anybody who's attending it thank you so uh, now uh, when it comes to the physical event where you, when you open uh, late october uh, that's the that, that's the current dates for 29th to 31st of october i think yeah uh, so uh, with the exhibitors and visitors likely to be very this year uh what will be the strategy of cosmoprof india to draw them in like is there something that you've got in place where you know where you feel that you know okay this is the number that's definitely coming in yeah so at the at the moment in fact, in fact we we have taken bookings i think there are exhibitors who have put repose faith in us and uh, we believe that there's opportunity to do the show but of course we are waiting for the government instruction so for us and it's it's about two way uh, things uh, way we could see this one is about permissions and other is about confidence so one thing is the government giving permissions to do the show and the other being confidence of the our stakeholders be it the exhibitors or the buyers or visitors wanting to come and visit the show so we are tracking it very closely as of now we are talking to all our stakeholders we are interacting with them trying to see what the confidence is of coming and attending a show as we so currently the, the exhi- exhibition center the nesco where we are supposed to do the show at, at the end of october is currently used as a covid center right now but yeah. we are all out we are still promoting the show we are marketing the show if if we get to see some clarity as currently we have got the lockdown 4.3.0 uh, thing where the malls are opening up yeah. the, the night curfews have gone out so i think they are gradually opening up so maybe by the lockdown 4.0 comes in i think they might open up even more so 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 we uh, so our promotion still go on uh, but once the, if, if the show happens believe me it will be in a in the most safe and secure atmosphere we we have our own various safety norms which as informa we are the largest b2b event organizer in the world and we have uh, created our own all secure safety norms which we are applying across all 40 countries where we are doing uh, supposed to be doing our events and uh, we will apply those safety norms where there will be safety hygiene norms social distancing which will be practiced and we'll have those b2b meetings we'll try to minimize the physical interface which will interactions that might happen so so lot lot of things will uh, take this uh, as we as we move ahead sure and uh, uh, now uh, we come to the moola part <laughs> what kind of uh, investment is informa looking at in the next couple of years in this market so informa definitely has huge plans for the, the, the beauty and cosmetic sectors in india because because uh, they see india as as a very uh, potential market where there is there is uh, in, in fact uh, a, a burgeoning market in terms of beauty and, and cosmetic sectors so so we will come like as as you see this year we have already launched the personal care and ingredients expo which which is in addition to the this is a costume prof expo we are seeing so we will try to see uh, what all different value additions will be there we may lo- look at expanding it beyond uh, just mumbai uh, creating platforms across this, uh, various cities in the near future maybe segmented platforms for uh, various stakeholders within the industry so maybe maybe we maybe have some specific events within events or maybe events during the year for say salon owners for manufacturers for dealer distributors which will focus on them and year round engagement which we could do so all all those things are what we we would definitely look at so there's a long term uh, look out and what we are looking at is to make costume prof india as a hub for this entire regional in asia so be it the south asia region be it the southeast asia or the asian region who may definitely look this uh, india as a hub for sourcing or even the west asia say the middle east who would want to look at sourcing so india is what we are trying to look at making it as a hub for the sourcing in the couple of years so informa will definitely keep on investing in this and try to make it more and more better as a platform for the beauty and cosmetic sector okay that sounds like great news for india um so um i also wanted to ask a, a question in the direction of you know the costs you know the how much of a challenge is selling space in india you know because uh the events before you and there are these uh, various events who uh, basically have been selling space at uh, you know uh, 
at rock bottom prices and there's a lot of undercutting happening in the market all the time so how do you how do you uh, manage those challenges so i think uh, it's it's not a challenge which we are just facing in uh, just the cost and profit as a vertical we 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 are working as in pharma in 16 different verticals we are shows in pharmaceutical as you said uh, renewable energy also multiple verticals and we we see that kind of trends happening across verticals but we always when we when we set up our business in 2006 we came with a clear vision that what we want to offer is a quality product we don't want to offer uh, by undercutting things because then we'll have to cut corners and we may not be able to promote the show or invest in Or show in the long run, so I think uh, that's the reason we have always priced. Probably, maybe it might be seen as a premium pricing by for some parts of the industry. But I think I think that's what we really need to deliver a quality show so that we can keep investing in that and actually add value to the industry. I think if if we start cutting corners, then of course uh, there's no end to it really, and uh, that's where we will be. So we'll always maybe. as compared to our peers uh, in the industry we may always look at a slightly a pricier option but then uh, believe in it that uh, believe in me that we follow the cost of legacy and we will always give you quality and always invest in enough marketing so that you the exhibit also participate in go back happy that uh, they get their uh, required buyers uh, we will invest in buyers with content uh, where, where a lot of content which will be created to be most relevant so we we'll invest in all those factors which will make the show So as i said our, our vision is not just india our vision is to make it as a hub for this entire region in asia i would say so that that's what we are looking at okay so as a marketplace for cutting edge in beauty so what do you see as a initial uh, you know growth area is it uh, prestige mastige or mass uh, for the beauty industry and with the market veering towards greater local production uh, how does this does that change your strategy because you know the government is all calling out for be vocal about local you know, those kind of things are also happening uh, in, uh, some due to of course covid and some uh, because uh, each government has its own policy so uh, i would like to you know uh, uh, have your uh, views on this yeah i think uh, let, let's understand india as a market india we we are the second largest populous country in the world with uh, what about 60 crore youth under 24 Yeah. Uh, age of 24 so the size of market beauty and wellness before probably pre covid has been growing at a cagr of about 18% i think i think that that really says a lot about this industry now uh, we we always had a traditional affinity for beauty and more knowledgeable we our consumers are very knowledgeable they want to in fact they also have the strong interest in cosmetic products so so that this growing connected population has just been exposed to the trendy international brands that we are talking of and there is huge excitement and craving for this knowledge as well as the new cosmetic products that we are seeing which are getting exposed to the indian market because earlier we had only few brands which were there but with uh, markets opening up with like uh, we coming in the there are other shows definitely this new international brands will look at indian markets and as well as our own indian bank, uh, brands will get exposed to the global market so what we are saying is the unique concerns uh, and culture of indian consumer uh, consumers have left gaps in the market creating huge potential for uh, this further product development for us and there will be a shift and uh, like what we see the shift will be from not just uh, they'll want just a skin care product they'll also want the skin care product to be a toxic free product say yeah. it would be a safe or a, an organic product which which they will want to go for so it, it's uh, uh, also the industry being dominated by lightening uh, the skin lightening products which which we have seen really in the past but i think the narrative is growing and a lot of home grown cosmetic brands also want to make this shift in this from this narrative uh, that's that's what we are really seeing as as we speak uh, and i uh, i think that these are things i think the minimalism will be a cornerstone of this movement as people try to step away from this conspicuous con- consumption so so lots of different trends are emerging as we speak i think i think every company i would say should look at garnering trust and providing value i think i think if if we say that if we provide value as well as build a trust from our customers i think we will get take all those beauty boxes i think i think we'll have lot more consumers coming and running to us and buying our products i think i think this is something which we are seeing as 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 we speak so uh, i hope i'm able to answer my, uh, your question really oh yes oh yes perfectly in fact uh, you know um, there there has been a lot of uh, shake up in the market after uh, you know the being vocal for local uh, anthem was released uh, by the government um, but we also realize that there are lots of brands who are getting uh, into joint ventures with indian companies and 
you know, creating, uh, it, it, it's, as you said, uh, will also become a, a hub for manufacturing uh, for the world. Um, there is a lot of shift happening from China and other things are also happening uh, side by side. So, um, and lastly, any, uh, what's your vision uh, for the brand and Informa in general for the next five years? So I think we, we, we are, we, we are, we are uh, actually, I would say it's, it's been 14 years in this country and uh, we are more Indian than any other probably company. I think, of course, for costume and beauty and cosmetic, uh, cosmetics industry, we probably might be new. I mean, just done one full-fledged edition, but I think, I think we understand the market really well. We, we have a full-on Indian team over here. We have over uh, 350 team members sitting in uh, seven different cities in India. Uh, who are actually understanding the market really well. And I think that's what we will want to be. Uh, whatever we do in India has to be customized to the Indian, Indian, Indian market, really. That, that's, that's our goal has been. And how we can benefit the Indian market, not just bring something, because being an international company, we have that kind of strength that we can bring an international product and uh, get it to and do it and launch it in India. But what we want specialize over is is creating that indian experience which is unique which you won't probably go get to see in those international shows so uh, if, if say there are about say 2000 people visiting from india to say and the customer of asia or baloney i'm sure there are 20000 uh, buyers who are keen and interested who rather would want to go but probably for some reason are not able to travel so this is the what are my vision is i think this is we are bringing the world to you and also want to uh, it be it in terms of exhibitors, be it in terms of buyers. I think, I think we want to create this platform where, which will benefit anybody and everybody who can come in, in terms of business, in terms of knowledge, sharing in terms of networking, in terms of uh, building contacts and, and whatever you would want to come. So this will be what we'll do. And it will be through any means now, because now with COVID, we have been able to see the benefits of doing also a virtual way also. So it will now be more of a physical as well as, uh, as a virtual platform also, which we we'll want to engage with. And also for various stakeholders within the industry. So that's, that's my vision for the beauty and cosmetics industry. If in particular, if I can say from what, we could do as uh, info markets in India. And of course, as, as a company, definitely we, we are growing. And in fact, we have grown over the years. When I joined in 2010, we are probably doing about six or seven shows in the country. Now we are doing 26 shows with 40, 50 uh, dedicated conferences that we are doing. I think, uh, I think we, we are in a, a growing part of the world. I think, and we'll keep on creating these opportunities across various verticals, I can say that, definitely. Fantastic. So uh, lovely talking to you, Yogesh Madras. And thank you for joining us on BTS Fast TV. Have a, have a great, great evening ahead and uh, um, stay safe and let's stay connected with all latest knowledge from you all the time. Definitely. Pleasure, Ritu. Thank you. And uh, nice talking to you. Thank nice. you so much.